Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. know that. Yeah. So he has some kind of a uh, patent or yeah, he copyrighted that. it, so no one else can use it. How 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 can you how can you possibly do that? Yeah, I don't know, but you can. And he has a brother who's also now an announcer, Bruce Buffer. He's from he's uh, announcing in the UFC. Okay, yeah, he also has some saying. It's time. It's time. Now. It's time. Yeah. He's also copyrighted that one. We should make our our own quote. Yeah, and then copyright it. What should it be? What's up, guys? Welcome <laughs> back to another episode of the Bamton Experience. Um, we call it season two because we 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 have been not really active for 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 how long? A month, something yeah. like that. We've and been it's a new year. It's a new year, and um, yeah, we started the podcast last last year. We did like seventeen or seventeen about seventeen episodes. Went quite well. Um, we got more, much more experienced, and now we are back season two better than ever before better than ever it's going to be amazing my name is Anna Santos and besides me sits as always my co-host here Hans Christian Wiesinghus what's up guys um the studio the studio still is still not finished is, is, is still in it's a work in progress it's, yeah it really is but you need to realize that there is a, a lack of material in the ro- world right now oh, that's so true. whenever I order a furniture it's um it's a long process mm. for 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 me to get it here to the apartment. Yeah. Um. So. So that's the only reason why. That's the only reason why, yeah. and also of course that I have been a little bit busy. Just um. But I saw there's like a big couch in the uh like the <coughs> hallway yeah, when there, you enter. Yeah, there's a couch out there, and that is supposed to go upstairs, but it's. And upstairs is where the studio is going to yeah, be. Yeah, that's that's in where the, the studio is going to be in the future. This is just a. Middle uh, <laughs> two. This temporary. is just a temporary uh, studio. Temporary. Hopefully, hopefully we will do something something much more pretty out of it in the future. But we have talked about that plenty of times. Let's just <laughs> wait until we, we we have a studio. And for now, this is our studio, and this is a. Uh, I think it's I think it's just fine. It's working. I like the laid back, um, not over the top uh, vibe that we are doing here. True. True. Um, it's cozy. It's cozy or something. And I have my cup of coffee here. I should just show it to the audience. Yeah, that's like a fan gift. It's right? a fan fan gift from Bali. Uh, one of many uh, brought this home with me. Did you nice. bring anything home from Bali? I did actually bring back a cup as well. I didn't bring it to uh, to the podcast. Ah, I you didn't, should have. Yeah, uh, but I did bring home a few things. But I didn't get nearly as much as you. But I did bring home because some. Because I'm, I'm. But there was also like a limit to how much luggage you could actually bring back. Yeah, home. yeah, for sure. But it's also because I'm way more popular than you. That's I, true. I receive so true. so much more uh, presents and mm. stuff. Mm, mm, mm. Um. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um. We start off this season two with um with a very hot topic. Um. Yeah. Of course, we we need to cover this uh this case, if you can call it that. I guess you can. Um. And I guess many of the. Of, of 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 you guys watching already know what it's about. It's about Li Jia and Go Jin Wei. Um, yeah, should we just take it mean all the way back to the beginning and then give people a status of where they are now in the in the case? Yeah, we can do that. So obviously, you go ahead. Yeah, obviously, uh, news broke that Li Jia wanted to go professional, so he wanted to. Stop training at the National Center with the Badminton uh, Association of Malaysia, BAM. Uh, he wanted to do everything by himself, all the tournament planning, training planning, and uh, yeah, funding him himself as well. And uh, BAM decided not to ban him. They're pretty strict on saying they didn't ban him. They're just refusing to enter him for international tournaments for two years, which is effectively the same as banning him. Mm, yeah. But I think there's some legal things about not saying that they're actually banning him uh, and for some reason they chose to uh, give the same punishment to Go Jin Wei uh, mm-hmm. who actually retired from the national team back in I think it was October or September and she actually fully retired so yeah, she, she retired from badminton yeah, right yeah. yeah because of some health uh, issues uh, but she now said that she wanted to start competing again just uh, professionally so they gave her the same ban although she was actually entered into India Open 
Mm-hmm. Um, but she agreed to be withdrawn from the list because she needed to have some talks with Bam first. Because yeah. they were quite surprised to see her in, in, in the draw and suddenly back to, to Bampton again. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that that is basically like uh, the news that they, they decided to do that Bam. And uh, we weren't quite happy to see those news because it, it goes against everything that we believe in, right? That players should be free to enter tournaments, of course. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the, the main issue here. Yeah. Uh, that that we believe Bam should never have the opportunity to give that kind of punishment. No. Um, yeah, and 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 people might wonder if 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 they have seen my Instagram post or or, or you also did did mm. um, did something on your Instagram account. Mm. They might know why the 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 federation has this power to do so, but it is a rule in the BWF. Um, which says that you need to be on good terms with your federation. Otherwise, the federation actually possesses this power not to register you for for the tournaments, which is a ban or suspension or something like that. Effectively, it is a ban. It is. So, I mean, I think one thing is that this rule is ridiculous. It Mm. shouldn't be there in the first place. But second, second, um, it's it's also very disappointing to see that a federation actually mm. would use this rule yeah I, in, I think in my view for sure it's an abuse of power like it they should deal with or take much more care of the power they've been given uh, and they they are abusing it in in these two circumstances and um, they're not using the rule as it's meant to be used mm. i think it's i see the fairness in the fact that if you like owe your federation tons of money then they can keep you from from playing and really give you like a hard punishment but that's not the case here um so i think f- yeah for me it is abusement of power from uh, from bam and i'm unfortunately it's not the first time we see it from a federation i know that in india it's been a big issue for many years that they have set up a lot of demands for uh, players to be like uh able to play international tournaments mm. so they need to play a certain number of uh, state tournaments in india and they need to be at a certain level uh, for the federation to okay. actually wanting to sign them up yeah um so so we've seen this kind of uh, abuse of power before mm-hmm. i think it's just it really blew up this time because it was such a big star as yeah. uh, lisi ja uh, who, who actually got caught in at this time but there is um some news broke out today just yeah. before we did this uh, this episode yeah. Should I just find his um Lizzie Jar's Instagram post? Yeah, it was quite nice to see this morning when I woke up that the first thing I saw on my Instagram was uh, Lizzie Jar posting this one. Yeah, so he he posted a picture together with I guess it's his family, his parents. It is. And then the the president of BAM. Yes. Tan Sri Norsa Sakaria. You know, I don't know do how you know to that's pronounce right? it, but um, I'm sure that was close enough. Should I just uh, should I read it? It's it's not that long, but yeah, a little bit. Okay. Sure. He says, "I am pleased to have a private heart-to-heart meeting with BAM President Tansri Nor Zakaria, together with my parents. I am happy that we are now resolving this issue with BAM, and after receiving Tansri's blessing to become a professional player." My past and future achievements will always be the product of Tansri Norsa. It's annoying that I have to say the name <laughs> so many times. Um, Bam and Malaysia. I'm forever thankful that Tansri, <laughs> that Tansri guided, nurtured, and gave me the opportunity to serve the country that I love. At the moment, I will commit myself for the Asia Team Championships. I hope this conclusion unites us as Malaysians and Bamson fans. Please continue to support BAM and always the country's professional players who are also nurtured by BAM because at the end of the day, we are one. Mm. So this means that they have come to some sort of agreement now. Yeah. um, That they have allowed him to go professional, as they call it, independent. And they will still enter him into the tournaments as they need to do. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't know... So so he, sure. but, but but he said he said that he's willing to play the the team championships. Yeah, I'm or, guessing that he's probably going to be still representing Malaysia in the official championships like the yeah. the Asian men's team championships will be which will be played in uh, February uh, and I guess also the Thomas Cup finals in uh, in May probably. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, we don't know exactly what kind of agreement they've come to. If uh, yeah, if there's going to be any other kind of punishment, but no. at least for now, we know that he's able to to yeah. play tournaments again. And I know you spoke to Lishi Jia, right? I saw I saw something on social media too. Mm. Um, I just I think they just came out from from the meeting, mm. and both Bam and Lishi Jia said that next week there will be some sort of letter to the public it's an announcement, uh, ex- announce- announcement uh, explaining the situation so we don't know yeah. their agreement for now yeah. but uh, it looks like they found some agreement for sure and uh, yeah in the post Lee was uh, quite satisfied with it so yeah. let's see let's see next week what it's all about yeah um, I think it's also like to some extent fair enough that there has to be some sort of uh, repercussion against it because I do understand this fact that especially in Asia the federations they put in a lot of money a lot mm-hmm. of time a lot of effort into the players and if you can just from day to day leave the center it's going to be quite difficult for the national associations to do like sponsorship deals and keep the money flow going mm. um i'm just not like i, I wouldn't say i understand it 100 because i still think the players should always be free to to play whenever they want to but I understand it works a little bit differently in, in Asia. So I think, yeah, as I said, to some extent, I, I see and understand why there needs to be a price to pay for uh, for leaving. So it's not just that players will just leave whenever they are a big star. Because he has, he has been like, he has been at the at the National Training Center since he was 13. Wasn't that what he told us? Yeah, yeah. When we did that. Yeah, so obviously they invested a lot of money in him. They invested quite a lot of money. He's, he's um, yeah, I mean, I, I probably he hasn't had one single expense in his life since he was 13, I could imagine. I don't think he Other than clothes and stuff, but... Um, no badminton related uh, expenses. No, no, no badminton sure. related. I mean, all, I mean his, uh, and, uh, the food is paid for where they live, uh, all the... Flight tickets to tournaments mm-hmm. and um, and stuff like that, and a salary on top of that. Yeah, and that's and that's uh, that's one of the the things that's different from the way we do it because we we are allowed to to negotiate our own sponsor deals, mm-hmm. but they are not. Mm-hmm. They are just getting so so. For instance, they they are uh, the, the Malaysian Balance Federation is sponsored by Yonix right now, right? Yeah, and um, so Yonix pays the federation. And then that deal includes all the players. Mm. Which and obviously is, that has a lot a different value if it's in, if it includes Lishi Jia. Yeah. Uh, and if it doesn't include him. Yeah. But I wonder if, if he's getting paid more than some of the lower ranked players. Uh, if, yeah, I if, think there is some kind of system, like a bonus system. Yeah. So you get paid more if you're ranked top ten and less if you're yeah, yeah. further down and so yeah. on. But I think this is I think this is one of the reasons why you want to go independent. Mm. It's because at some point when you get when you get big enough, mm. um, you will be able to make much, much, much more money from mm. making your own sponsorship deals instead of just being under like a collective mm. deal thing. Um, so yeah, I, for sure. I think that's one of the reasons why he wanted to go independent. Mm. I think we have also seen this issue with with other players. Um, I think I believe there was something with Lindan back in the days he mm. was not playing with the same as the federation and um i can't really figure out how they do in do it in japan because i think they have yonix right but i also see their yeah. racket deal is not this yeah i think for or? rackets they can do their own uh, okay. their own deals uh, okay. but i think when they are still playing international tournaments they kind of represent the federation so okay. they have to play in the the yonix clothing but also not 100 percent sure about that but okay. there's no doubt that in more and more places they're opening up a bit more so it's going to be more possible to do your own sponsorship deals i think in indonesia as well right that the players are hmm. able to actually do their they own are, deals are, yeah. yeah so i think it is they, it is they, more and more moving in that direction and I, I think like the federations and everyone out there needs to still understand that it's not like the federation they have zero bargaining power if they want to go do a sponsorship deal like like we do in Denmark. They still can sell uh, 
the sponsorship deals for the Thomas Huber Cup, the Sudirman Cup. So all the team events, we are still, of course, obliged to play in the the uh, sponsor of the, the federation. federation yeah. So there is some value there. And obviously, there's also other things. We need to be there for some photo shoots every year. We need to be able to be there for meet and greet events and stuff like that. So there is still places where you can find some value. Obviously, it's a bit less of a value than if you have the player 100% of the time. But I just feel like for me personally, it's it's the more correct way to, to go about it. And I hope that's also the direction that BAM... To be more individual, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you still have, you can still have this team-based setup uh, at BAM and in PPSI and in Babson Denmark, but you need to give more individual uh, opportunities to the players. Yeah. I understand it will give less money, so you, they probably need to scale down how many players they have and stuff like that, because the money is not going to be the same. But for me, at least, I, I think it's the right way to uh, to do it. But I'm thinking that for uh, for a lower lower ranked player who's not as good as Lee is in mm. Malaysia, they might be very happy with with how it's working because mm, sure. they are getting everything paid for, mm. and they w- might wouldn't even be able to make a. A sponsor deal for themselves if they mm. were independent so so yeah it's yeah for sure for the ones lower in the system it's a it's a uh, it's a good safety net for them to yeah. have no doubt about that but i just think at some point if you get good enough you are losing a mm. crazy amount of money yeah by still being paid mm. from the federation and instead of making your own deals yeah yeah so um yeah so you would also think it's fair that there would be some like they would like set a price that you would have to pay to go professional like would that be a good solution to so say like it costs 50,000 ringgit or something like that to go professional i don't know how much 50,000 yeah. ringgit is but but let's just use it it's just as, a number yeah, yeah just yeah. an example yeah um it might be a good idea so if the rations is their argument is that we have invested so much money um in in a certain player since you were yeah 13 and now you are now you are 27 suddenly you are extremely good now you can make a good living for yourself um and then you want to leave then they might stand back with the feeling of we have invested so much and Mm. now you are finally ready to produce results and give back to us Mm. and then you're going to leave Mm think that that's the perspective of the federation so it might be a good idea to say okay if you want to get out you have to pay this purse um mm. which should be a fair amount of course to to get out mm. that 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 could be one one mm. one way to do it mm. I, i've heard that argument a few times as well that uh, that you're not paying anything back but i i think it's a little bit uh, misunderstood also like because Lee Jar, he's still going to represent mm. Malaysia and like BAM and every other national body, it's supposed to be like a non-profit organization, right? They, they, in my eyes, are there to help nurture talent and help develop the sport and make it more popular. Um, so for me, Lee Jar is still paying back, even if he's professional. Yeah, I, sure. I understand that he's not paying back as much as if he was also there to spar with all the young guys and so on. Um, but it's it's not like he's gonna abandon uh, yeah, abandon Malaysia. Uh, so I think Bam has still, even if he's professional, they have still succeeded in the job actually helping him on his way. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I mean it's better. I mean the worst thing for them would be if if he moved to another country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like you saw with Kian, yeah. he 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 won a world championships re- representing Singapore. Yeah. Because he, I don't know the the story totally, but he wasn't good enough mm. in in Malaysia. So yeah, he, that he would be a total dis- disaster to lose. Uh, that least that would as well. be uh, that would be yeah. And people were discussing that because the rules say that if you move to a different country and you live there for twelve months, you can start representing that country actually. So he could just move to uh, to Singapore. Wouldn't be that far of a uh, like in terms of the distance. It's it's quite close to Malaysia, right? So yeah. That that would have been really really bad for them. So I think they're probably that's also why they've probably been pretty keen on finding a solution with uh, with Li Shi Jiana. I would say it, it happened quite fast. Yeah, it's only like three or four days, <laughs> yeah. five six days maybe since uh, the announcement broke out that mm. he has been suspended. Yeah, um, and now they already seem to have a deal. So they've yeah. been, 
I think BAM has had a hard time. For I think sure. the Malaysian Bantam Federation has been spammed. I mean, and they've sure. been under a lot of critique for this decision. Um, the fans were furious. They were extremely annoyed that they were not were not going to see their mm. best player in action for two years. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the post I made on Facebook was shared more than 14,000 times. I, wow. I, I've never had anything go viral like that before. Oh. Like, they, they've really been furious. I also saw the BAM last night. They actually made a press release where they said that they were aware that they've been criticized a lot. And uh, they also have seen the criticism from international players. So they even mentioned it in the, uh, in the press release. Yeah. So thanks to us and everyone else, there were a lot of guys. Uh, experience does yeah, it again. <laughs> yeah, but there were a lot of guys uh, speaking up on uh, Lisa Jazz behalf. Victor, uh, Igor Coelho from Brazil, also some of the Bulgarian uh, Stoiva sisters. There was a lot of players actually, uh, yeah, speaking up a little bit. But still, I would have liked to see more players for sure um, giving their opinion yeah. on the case. I mean, it was basically only Europeans, right? And Igor. Yeah, and Igor from Brazil. Mm. Yeah. 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 We had a similar we had a similar story, a similar case uh, with the Korean men's double pairs. Yeah. Uh, when was that? Like I think it was shortly after Rio, the Rio games in 16 because so, they so they played Rio 5 6 years ago now. Yeah. Do you remember the four players, Leon Day, Yo Yong Song and Ko and Shin Sung Yun and Bike, yeah, Bike. Yeah. Shin they have Chung. a lot of names. It's difficult yeah. for us yeah, to remember yeah. all of them, but um the two pairs who actually faced each other in the in the final in the in in the world championship final back in denmark 2013 14 14 yeah. Damn it, I, i'm I impressed so, you're so close i was so close you I, really I, don't I was, know your badminton history so that was really good i was in i was in the arena watching mm. in in Ballarup. i was in the arena playing It's just not the final. Not not. I was only watching <laughs> the final. I remember the the men's single final was between Li Chong Wei and and um, Jing Long. That's true. Jing Long won. That's true. He uh, saved a uh, like a kill between his legs in the first game, which was like a yeah. really deciding point. Was it at nineteen twenty or something? Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly. I just remember oh. it really was uh, an important yeah. one. Uh, anyways, um, so the Korean pairs. Um, they had a similar case. They wanted to go independent. Mm. The Korean Federation did not allow it. Um, so I don't know if they gave them like a, a suspension for a period of time. I know that the Korean rules at that time said that for men, I think you had to be 31 years old before you could go professional. Um, and for women, it was different. I, I don't remember exactly because uh, I think there was actually also uh, the mixed doubles partner, Eom who's playing uh, with Ko now in mixed doubles. I think she was in the same situation. So they could not go professional until they reached that age. Um, so it wasn't like they, they gave them like a certain time frame, like one year, two years. It depended on their age. Okay. But they fought, they fought this decision in the court and they ended up uh, winning the case actually. Yeah. But it took them like, like two years to... They lost a lot of time of their career. They lost a lot of time in in their career, and I don't think we have ever seen a player like Leong Day back to to the level that he had for sure not before that. I mean, two years off where you are spending so much mental time on, I mean, in court and mm. stuff. It's just not a, a fun situation to be in, and you might not practice as hard as yeah. you would if you knew I had a tournament in like three or four weeks yeah, I'm sure it's pretty hard to keep up the mo same yeah. level of motivation right and One. I think also the fact that you're not competing in two years like you maybe lose touch a little bit with mm. what is important and how is the game developing because obviously sure. a lot is happening in two years right so that's a very good thing for Lisi Jia and hopefully also for Go Jung Wei her mm. case is not finished yet right no yeah I, I actually spoke to her earlier today and she said she just sent in her appeal mm. uh, so it hasn't been uh, looked at yet but yeah. yeah hopefully she will also uh, be free to play again yeah. very soon so she has appealed the uh, the ban or mm. yeah what we should call it no so so her case is um, still open but I mean I guess it's going to end in a similar similar uh, outcome as Lizzie Jazz case yeah I can't really see why why no. it wouldn't uh, no. so yeah let's cross our fingers for her and uh, hope yeah. for uh, some good news in a, in a few days yeah 100%. I have like like one more point I want to make about uh, a BAM because mm -hmm. I, I think the fact that they sent out that press release yesterday uh, 
acknowledging the pressure from fans and from international players and everyone around and they're changing such a big and drastic uh, decision in the matter of days that's that for me is like really poor leadership Mm -hmm. because seems like they didn't really think it through exactly exactly and when you make a decision of refusing to enter two of your best players and especially one of them being your biggest star when you make that decision to keep them out of it for two years like that's a huge decision so in in my mind they should have thought that through every single scenario and if they can change it from being the worst case to the like best case for Lee Jia in the matter of three days because of public pressure I just I really don't see that as good management in uh, in any way no. no I agree it's um it's a little bit odd um it is but maybe they were just I mean maybe they were testing the players just to yeah. see how tough are they really mm-hmm. I mean because when when the players saw the suspension they might I mean, crumble under the pressure and then, okay, fair enough. I'm coming back to you yeah, guys just yeah. so I can play. So maybe they were just testing them. Mm. Um, if so, yeah, that's um, a fair point. If so, then it was a, a nasty move, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. And it uh, had some backslash, right? <laughs> but I'm just thinking maybe the case were different with the Korean pairs. And maybe it's not, maybe you can't uh, compare it. But if the rules of BWF doesn't even hold up in the court, mm. I mean, why is there in the first place? I mean, yeah, that's a good question. It, but it, it like that the Koreans win a court case doesn't necessarily mean that the Malaysians would no, no. win a court case, that's right? Because right. the rules can be different from yeah. country to country. Um, but and you also need a, a badass lawyer. And stuff. You do. You maybe do. You just maybe they were lucky with the lawyer being better than. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is for sure. Like that. That is still for me like the main issue uh, with all of this that BWF should never give this power to BAM or any other federation yeah. they can they can punish the players in other ways but it can never be fair to take away their chance of playing and doing what they actually do for a living I, I just don't see any fairness in, in having that opportunity like we're fortunate that we play in Denmark where it, I, I don't see that would ever happen mm-hmm. but obviously it is happening around the world I heard a story of a, I think it was a, back in the days, many Mm. years ago, and I can't even remember the names and stuff, but I think it was in England. Mm. I'm not totally sure, guys, about the story, so maybe (laughs) maybe I shouldn't even tell, but I go ahead anyway. Please, like, exaggerate a little bit so it makes the story even better. (laughs) (laughs) So I think it was in in England, there was a a female player in the same situation with her federation, Mm. and um, they they were just canceling her she was not allowed to play and um and i think they ended up settling it because they were going to court and all Mm. this stuff Mm. and they realized that the loser of this case is just going to be um flat i mean Mm. no money left just Mm. uh, bankrupt bankrupt i mean yeah so because so you would have to pay for the court expenses and stuff, stuff like that. Stuff like and lawyer yeah, expensive yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So they, they settled it. And um, since that, this rule has not been used really in the mm. Western part of the world. Yeah. But you still see it some, some in some countries in Asia, yeah. Yeah. On, which is unfortunate. Yeah. I also, I don't think it's going to be changed anytime soon. Like, even though we are being really vocal about it, like you said, we haven't seen that many uh, top players actually complaining. Uh, we haven't seen a single one from... Uh, Asia, oh. uh, only a few ex players from uh, Malaysia, but no, no. Uh, yeah, and no, a few players sharing our stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, but yeah. not really making no their one, own yeah. posts. And no one really doing it actively, uh, and I think also the way BWF is built up, where it's like it's a member association. Like they are, uh, they are there for all the members, like all like BAM and Badminton Denmark, PBSI and so on. Like those are the members of BWF. So obviously they have to answer to them and taking away that power would be taking away power from their members and giving it to the players. Mm. Uh, And I I just, with the current structure, I just don't see that happening uh, at any point. We players are slaves to the federations and <laughs> yeah. to the BWF. So, like, it, it I sounds mean, think, it think, sounds think, harsh, think but to some it. extent, we, you're we right. We have an athletes' commission, yeah, and it has like one vote out of yeah, out of 
20 something 20 something when yeah. when a decision is to be made mm. like for instance the new scoring system mm. did we have like yeah but that's vote? actually not decided on council level that's decided by the members so that was decided by all the, all the national federations, federations around the world yeah okay and there you have different number of votes like uh, the biggest federation they will have five votes and the smaller ones will have four three two and one but yeah other decisions in council if there's anything that has to be voted through in council we the players will have one vote and yeah the rest of the council members it's it's 20 something so it's I mean, it's obviously yeah. it doesn't mean much if you only have one vote but obviously you have the chance to also put forward your views um, but yeah, it's quite funny that you mentioned 2014, the World Championships there, because that's one of the, I was in the council at that time, the Players' Council, and that's one of the meetings I, I remember the clearest that we had at that World Championships, uh, where we discussed a lot of things, and one of them we've already discussed on this podcast before, but this rule about that you lose your points if you withdraw against a uh, compatriot, and we discussed that a lot at that uh, event, because it was a new rule there. And we were clearly against it because we said it was only going to hit all the wrong people. And they didn't listen. They still put the rule in. And now we see in a few cases now, it's just been hitting the wrong people. The the ones that are withdrawing with no bad intentions. So that that's, says a lot about that. It, it's really difficult for the Athletes Commission to get anything through mm. unless you almost agree with everyone else <clears throat> in the uh, council yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't feel like the effect of the council is uh, the the athletes commission is is great. It's sad. It's sad. Mm. It's sad in many ways. Um, <laughs> do you know the do you do you know the story of uh, how the the tennis tour started, the ATP tour? I think you know it better than me actually, because <clears throat> you shared a good article with me, and I must admit that it was quite long. It was no, late it wasn't in the that long. Uh, I was late in the evening. I needed to put Vincent to bed and everything, so I only like read it part of it. Fair enough, but as I understand it, it was also the players were not satisfied with a bunch of things. One of them was the tournament schedule. They were being, I mean, thrown around, just played so much. I mean. Similar to what we experienced in in the in the last part of uh, last year, hmm. um, they felt like the sport was being not marketed the right way. Similar to what I believe, um, badminton is really not being marketed the right way. Um, I mean, just look at the money in badminton compared yeah. to tennis. Hmm. I mean, what well, the price money for for winning All England compared to winning Wimbledon in tennis? It's like I mean. Do you know the what, what what is the how much do you do you win if you win the Wimbledon? I'm not sure. You no, know, I don't know either. But it's like millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, it is. And it for is. winning all England, you maybe win like hundred thousand US dollars. No, 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 not even that much. Eighty. I just saw a picture 000. today from Thailand Open back in January where I lost to Victor in the final and he won seventy thousand okay. dollars. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, com com compared to saying is it's. Uh, extremely low amount and and i just i keep hearing that badminton is this huge sport there are so mm. many players worldwide and it's mm. just a, mm. a an incredibly popular sport in asia and stuff mm. but it's difficult really to believe it uh, otherwise otherwise it is re it really is this big big sport but just being marketed in the total mm. wrong way yeah like a sleeping giant it's like a sleeping giant yeah. as one of our friends uh, yeah. uh, exactly. says um, exactly. Do you know, have the number? What's the collected price money for the All England? One million dollars. One million dollars, yeah. I think it's... It's around 50 million dollars in Wimbledon. 50 million dollars. Yeah, so... So 40, 50... 40, yeah, 50 times as big. 15 or 50? 50. 50. 50. 50. <laughs> <laughs> so 50 yeah. times as big. Well, like one thing that makes it hard to believe also that... that it is such a huge and popular sport is that when we go to events a big events it's very rarely sold out like if you watch the wimbledon yeah. or if you watch us open or french open or yeah basically any yeah. of the bigger tournaments they always have huge crowds yeah uh, so again either as you say it's not marketed the right way or it's not as big as we uh, we hope and believe yeah and i mean yeah it, i'm always surprised when we play in china mm -hmm. because yeah. you 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 get the feeling that badminton is primarily 
in China, mm. right? I mean, I guess that's where like most of the money comes from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and most of the brands make their yeah, money yeah, is yeah. by selling in China. Yeah, um, I've never experienced a full crowd in China. Maybe it was close to to full when we played the Sudirman Cup. I think it was mm. 2018, 19, something like that. Mm. I can't really remember, but other than that. And I mean, they, they. I mean, it's not like they don't have a, a huge population. <laughs> so no. or I mean, good players for that. No, or not <laughs> a good players. So it, it should be possible to yeah. fill it. But I mean, if you don't care about the player, mm. if the event is not promoted and hyped, then then you are just not invested in it mm. as a mm. as a um, as a spectator. So why do you, why do you even care to show up? So mm. yeah, I mean True. that's. True. I mean the sport is horribly marketed mm. and i would like to know about a pwf's i mean sponsorship deals mm. how much do they make when they make a deal with hsbc or mm. total or some of their sponsors yeah. and how much of those money goes back to to, to the players in price money how much of those money goes back to marketing promoting mm. the sport the mm. events the players everything yeah and how much of it just go goes right into their own pocket I mean PWF. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I really have no idea. Like, I, I think a lot of the numbers are actually pretty accessible through the uh, like the, the sh- uh, like finance reports and stuff like that. You can find a lot of it online, but I, I'm not sure like how specific it, it is. Um, but I, I think you can find quite a few of the numbers actually, if you want to dig. Yeah, I would like to. I would. I would like yeah. to know that. That would be interesting, and also the. How many people is really watching Old England? How many mm. people is watching certain mm. certain mm. tournaments? Because it feels like it's not the um, the numbers is not available to the mm. public. Mm. But you keep hearing that there are so many millions of people. Yeah, watching. I keep hearing this. There's one like number that's always annoying me so much. Like people keep saying that that it's the second biggest sport in the world. Mm. And I think it's because like if you Google it, there is like one place where you can where it says that, and then it's just been going around like it's that's the truth um, but i have no idea like how you would measure it either because I, I don't think like figures or numbers of how many play each sport is available from each country all over the world but it, it just i have a really hard time believing that it is actually uh the second big, biggest sports in terms doesn't of make participation. sense when it comes to the money then no no for sure not for sure not <clears throat> I mean, you're all, you are, I mean, you are, you are, you are broke. I mean, <laughs> I'm broke. I'm broke. <laughs> you are considering selling your house and, and my son. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything. So but for and now I have had no offers for him. <laughs> I can take him a few days if, <laughs> if, if that could help. But I think you would break him. You, you are. Ah, say that again. I think you would break him. Break him? No. Yeah, so like his value would be lost. No, no. He will break me mentally. <laughs> I've been playing with him. When we were in Dubai, I played with him for yeah. five, ten minutes, just running up and down the hallway, and I was exhausted after five minutes. You're still minutes, recovering. So. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> recovering, and it's been a few weeks. Uh. No, but, but yeah, but back to how the, the ATP tennis tour started. The mm. players were unhappy with a bunch of different things, and they, I think they were like, they had like three votes, mm. and the, the federation back then had six or something, and they were not happy with their 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 free votes mm. compared to the federation six votes yeah so I mean, it was still get, difficult for them to get anything they couldn't through. get yeah. get stuff through and yeah. just look at our situation yeah. we have one vote yeah. out, out of 20 like something 20 yeah. something yeah. and yeah. i mean <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that's it's, true um it's quite but yeah as i said in my votes. facebook post as well that i would uh i wouldn't mind exploring the uh, opportunity of like a professional tour at some point mm. but we need but, someone I mean, with knowledge and you need someone with uh, money, money. Uh, and a yeah. vision and a, yeah. and a real salesman. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, why, why, why not? Why not having like multiple tours? I mean, in, in a sport like MMA, for instance, mm. there's the UFC and then there's Bellator and then there's Cage Warriors and there's mm. multiple organizations yeah. um, for, sure. for the fighters. So there could be something similar mm-hmm. um, in badminton <clears throat> in the future yeah um it's possible for sure because i'm 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 losing hope a little bit of changing stuff in the bwf Mm. when when the players have zero rights Mm. and um it's just controlled by by the bwf and the federations and yeah yeah i think this case for sure is uh 
like proof that there is zero power for the players in in, in this situation. And the the BWF when there whenever there is a case like this, it doesn't seem like there are, I mean, thinking through their their rules. It's just mm. like they just shut down and <laughs> just say yeah. nothing. Yeah. Did they have a comment to this case? I know Danish TV tried to get like a comment, and they said they uh, they had seen the case was going on, but they didn't know all the specifics, so they didn't want to uh, yeah say anything. No. So basically, they were just letting Malaysia and Lichitia figure it out themselves. Yeah, I think. I but saw, I think I it, s- it's it's yeah. also like Go quite on. difficult for them to intervene because uh, Malaysia is just exercising the power mm. they've been given. Um, so I think in this situation, they could not really do anything. Yeah, they could look at their rules, but for like a rule change to happen, again, it would have to be voted through probably at the AGM where it would have to be the members who are voting it through. So that would basically be the members agreeing to give away the, the power they have. Uh, yeah. I, I Again, I don't see that happening, uh, especially with a lot of the Asian federations having more power than the, the, the smaller associations. Because I think actually, like an association like Badminton Denmark, they don't want to have that rule that says they have to enter every player into international tournaments. Because it is a lot of extra work actually when you have a lot of players who are active playing future series, international series, and all the way up to Super One Thousands. Uh, and I know also Badminton Denmark, they don't want to receive the prize money, for example, for every single player, and then they have to transfer it out to every single one so a lot that's of, how it's working now yeah exactly that's also one thing that we would like to have changed right that you just get your money straight from the tournament yeah. organizer so it's not a wish for a lot of the federations to actually have this extra job to do um, but i think it's i think it's looked different it's easier for the for the for the bwf then yeah exactly they, they just sure. have to pay the federations instead yeah. of 200 different players yeah, yeah and the same with entries like they only have to have communication with the federations instead of every single player so from that perspective of course i understand it but it's just it's not fair in my eyes yeah i agree i i really i really would like to know how much they how much money they make from every tournament mm. i mean because think about the insane schedule that we had last year we were just being thrown around to so mm. many different tournaments just Players were getting injured, mm. uh, totally drained um, physically and mentally, and not really making much out of it. Mm. And then getting a fine if you would withdrew again your against your countrymen, mm. or <laughs> if you didn't show up for a certain tournament, you can get fined and and mm. stuff. And I mean, it's just crazy. All these all all this power they have to make us play, mm. and then. Um, yeah, and then they probably make a lot of money from the events and the players doesn't, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's quite scary that, like, for the trip to Bali, uh, like, I made a second round and a quarterfinal, which, of course, it's not, like, the best, best results, but it's still pretty decent in two of the biggest result, uh, biggest tournaments in the world. And when I count all my prize money and you deduct all the... Uh, uh, all the money I spend on flight tickets and the hotel room and food and stuff like that, I get out of it with just about eight hundred dollars hmm. and plus. Congratulations! Yeah, thanks. So <laughs> that, that's really, really that's not not good. No, so, like, bad. imagine if that was making a quarterfinal in Wimbledon and a second round in a, one of the warm-up wins. I think I would have a uh, like a better financial statement afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So eight hundred dollars. Imagine if you were were the are you what? What's your ranking? Twenty three. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. If you were the the twenty third best tennis player or the twenty third best golf player in the mm. world or yeah, football yeah. player, uh, um, I actually saw. Did, did you see this? Uh, like Stein Slyke Pedersen, who a lot of you guys will know as a commentator. Uh, he made this post where he actually uh, figured out what the world ranking in men's singles would be if. The rankings weren't frozen so if you only looked at the results for the past 12 months which is how the ranking usually works did you see that post no, no? so he had the top 25 and it will be victor one 
U2. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. No! Yeah. And Gemke 8, and I was 11, actually. So oh, we would have four yeah. Danes in, in top 11 if it, that was the case, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Open up open up the, the ranking. But I think almost like the best thing about it was that uh, Chen Long, he was uh, 25, and he only had one result. So that was the, the <laughs> final of the uh, yeah. Olympics. Okay, so. okay. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. will change my Instagram view now to actually world number two. Yeah, I will, I will write that. I think that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a lot about the first of all the Peter, the, you know, the Lisi Jia and Go Jin Wei case, and then 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 that led to a bigger talk about the BWF and how things is constructed in this in this sport. Um, anything else that's um, worth mentioning? There's been a, a tournament in India. That's the only thing that's been played, right? On the it highest is, level. Yeah, there's been a Super, super 500, 500 tournament. And, and a Super 300 now. And a Super 300, week. yeah. I think yeah. it was, I, I didn't follow it that closely, but there were a lot of COVID cases. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah, they had a pretty crazy situation in the Super 300 last week, where the men's singles final was just cancelled. <laughs> uh, like, it was yeah, like a right. no match, because it was between uh, Luca Klebo and... Uh, Arnaud Macle from France and uh, do they get a fine n- for withdrawing against yeah, a, I, a countryman I don't think so because uh, <laughs> uh, in the case of Victor uh, when he got COVID against you uh, the Europeans he got to keep those points so I think they've kind of made uh, made it clear that if it's COVID related then you will get to keep your points and okay. so on but it, it's pretty like I don't know if funny is the right word but it is a funny situation that Arno was tested positive, but because he was sharing a room with Klebo, then he's a close contact, so he also had to withdraw. Mm. So they both had to withdraw at the same time. Okay. So they said now that's a no match, and now they need to figure out who's gonna be crowned the winner mm. and what are they gonna do with the ranking points and right. also the prize yeah. money. Yeah. So I, I think they're gonna be probably both being looked at as number two in the tournament so they okay. get so they get second place points okay. yeah, but they said they would come with some kind of statement i haven't seen that yet but uh, okay. yeah maybe it's out there somewhere just share the points and share the yeah share the prize I, money i think that would be the most fair thing um yeah. to do but yeah there were a lot of cases a lot of players who tested positive uh throughout those two weeks there was also yeah, they can play for it back in France <laughs> at the uh, Nationalized Training Center. That would be cool. There was also a tournament in Sweden on a, on a lower level. Yeah. That, w- that was also hit by a lot of corona cases. I think mm. the the player who won, if I'm not mistaken, he won the semifinal and the final on, on walkover. Okay, I didn't even know. that. Someone told me uh, at yeah. training today that that okay. was uh, what went down there. The only thing I noticed from that tournament in Sweden was the age of the, the girl who won the women's singles. She's from Thailand. Uh, I f- should be able to remember her name, but I can't. It was a pretty cool name. How old do you think she is? I he- I heard that you said it. Oh, okay. So how old is she? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna find her on Instagram because it's it seems like to it's know her name. it's a little bit easier for 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 the girls to break through at a very young age than it is for the men. For it's sure. Probably something with the physique and stuff. They are more evolved, um, younger, earlier. So Pichaman. Or Patniput. From where? From Thailand. From Thailand, yeah. yeah. 29,000 followers already on Instagram. 29? Yeah. 1,000. That's pretty good for... 29,000? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good for a 14-year-old. It is. F- a huge future ahead. We yeah. have 29,000 yeah. Yeah. followers. Is so get used to that name. Say it again. <laughs> 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 Forgot it already. Uh, <laughs> it is Pichaman. Or Patniput. Okay. I know that P- Pichaman. 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 Yeah. That, that <laughs> Pizza Man. <laughs> That's quite easy. They Pichaman. have a lot of cool names Pichaman. actually. Uh the Thailand players have some crazy names. Yeah. It's really, really hard yeah. to pronounce uh, for us mm. Europeans. I know that Ratchanak Insanon, another woman single from Thailand, she was also very young when, when she broke through. Yeah. I think she, she won the world championships at eight age eighteen. Okay. In China. I actually thought she was younger. Oh, 18 when she won. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Still pretty good. Still pretty good, yeah. And the the Super 500 tournament, the world champion, Kian, was, was back in the final playing against uh, Lakshya Sen. Mm. Yeah. Lost two, it. 
lost it to Lakshya Sen. Didn't. Did you watch it, the final? No, no, no. I didn't. No. Did you? No, me neither. <laughs> so <laughs> so we can't skip, really talk about that. Let's just skip that one. But I think it's uh, like it's quite interesting uh, to think what had happened if Lakshya had beaten uh, Srikant in the World Championships. Like he lost, mm. what was it, like 17 or 18 in the third? In the I semifinal. don't think he was really close in the third, but I can't remember. Wasn't it like 17 in the third? Maybe he was down quite a lot and then came, came back, back a little bit. Yeah, little yeah, bit. Right. yeah. yeah it would have been interesting right. to see because I think Lakshya also beat Kian in French Open, perhaps. Okay. So he's beaten him a couple of times uh, quite recently, okay. actually. Lakshya Sen is also a- another guy to watch out for. I mean, he's mm-hmm. I don't know his age, um, but uh, but I think he's twenty. I think he's older. Let's check it. <laughs> Let's find I out. I think he is um, twenty. Laksha. But he's uh yeah reached reached the uh, the semifinal at the World Championships. He's been playing better and better and better. So, Indians' uh, biggest prospect, I would say, he's a uh, he's a guy to watch out for. What is he? Twenty. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not turning twenty one until say he, August. Let's just say he's twenty. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what? Ah, what? <laughs> But that is really the news in the Bampton world. I think it we've is. covered covered most of it. We have. And, and and once again, a few cancellations here and there. The European the Team Championships cancelled. Spain Masters cancelled. So uh, in a few weeks, we are going to play the National Championships. That yep. is the next for for me and Hans. We're going to have to play it so we don't get fined another 25,000. Yeah, that's right. If you Ooh. saw my vlog, it, it was expensive for me not to play it last year. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm there, totally ready this time. That's yeah. for sure. Um, I played it last year and I lost to a guy from India. Yeah, that's a that's a fun story. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. want to? Yeah, so I lost to <laughs> Karan Raja Raja Rajan, who actually plays in my club in Hoibier. Uh But he's still Indian, uh, but he's been living in Denmark for a few years, and uh, he's now representing Denmark in international tournaments. So all his entries are sent through the national federation here, and. I guess when you haven't played for India internationally in a few years, then he's able to play at the Danish national championships, even though he's Indian, which is, in my eyes, a little bit weird. <laughs> it is a little bit weird. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because I lost. I already said it before. I was cheering that. for him. Yeah, me too. I, I, I me hope too. That he, <laughs> it, would, it would have been amazing if he won uh, the Danish championship. Uh, yeah, honestly, after I lost to him, I was cheering for him because, as, as you, I thought it would be a pretty good story <laughs> if we had an Indian guy winning the Danish championships. Yeah. He's one of us now. Yeah, he is. He is. We love you, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, that uh, I think that's it for, for this podcast. Um, yeah, a, a great one. Maybe the best one ever in my... in in For sure. You know, TBE, it stands for the Bamton Experience and the best ever. So I think this Never was... Never thought about that. This was the most, most important um, episode. Let's copyright it. Right maybe do like TBE times TBE. Yeah, but Ooh. TBE is also like Floyd Mayweather's brand, the best ever. He has caps where it says TBE and stuff. Damn. Damn it. So we can't copyright that. So uh, Fair enough. Yeah, very good episode, Hans Christian. We got uh, into some important stuff, I would say. Was it boring, Oliver? He's shaking his head. It might good. be a little bit more like um, for the for the hardcore Badminton fans. The ones who's not just here for mm. short entertainment and stuff, but they can watch my vlog instead. Yeah, it's a good one. This one, yeah, the latest one. Like usually, the it's vlog a, or the yeah, podcast. The, the vlog. The vlog. <laughs> like usually, it's a lot of shit, but like this one is good. I, th- I also I like it. So, yeah. so guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to to the channel, and um, in the near future, we will actually have the Bamson Experience own youtube channel but uh, stay tuned for that too but for now subscribe to this channel Anna Sand Thompson here on youtube like this video please leave leave a comment if you like the episode give us some feedback um and share with us your views on on the different points that we have been um, talking about in this episode and that's it peace out bye bye guys bye guys